Okay, this is a 4R70W. It's a Ford AODE transmission. I got it mounted up on the engine stand. I'm going to take this thing apart, see if I can figure out why the overdrive is not engaging. What it does, it shifts just fine. The fluid is clean. I'm not taking the pan off, but I actually did a fluid service on it a few months ago. And uh, so it was clean then and it's clean now. After you shift into one, two, two, three, no problems there, it goes into uh, fourth gear overdrive and it just falls into a neutral position. So uh, that's the issue with it. Feels like it goes into neutral when it hits overdrive and will not engage. So I'm going to pull this pan, I'm going to pull the valve body, I'm going to kind of look at things step by step as we go along and uh, see if we can determine just exactly what's causing it in this particular case. Now, sometimes you know, there's various reasons uh, why the overdrive may not engage. It could be a worn overdrive clutch band on the forward clutch. Could be a uh, boost valve problem where uh, the uh, valve gets worn or scored and it sticks in the bore um, where the valve sets. So anyway, we're going to take this thing apart and see if we can discover just exactly why our fourth gear overdrive is not working. By the way, this is an all-wheel drive Explorer off of a uh, 5 liter 302 engine V8. That's why the tail shaft looks a little bit different there, the tail shaft housing. It's got a transfer case that attaches to it there. I'm not sure how many of those are on the road as far as the all-wheel drive V8s go, but uh, this vehicle was pretty much loaded. It's a 2000 model, by the way. This transmission was rebuilt. Mmm, it's probably been probably been six or seven years or maybe seven or eight years ago it had some other issue with it I don't think it was overdrive I think it was something else so we may find something in there that maybe was not done properly that uh, may have caused the overdrive to fail alright this is the pan and I've got most of the bolts out I've got one bolt that's holding it on I've not removed the pan yet the nice thing about these is it has a resealable or reusable pan gasket so as long as there's no damage or nicks on the pan gasket you can reuse it and it works great they usually don't leak at all uh, you don't have to use extra sealer or anything like that they work just great and another nice feature is on these Fords the torque converter usually have uh, they usually have a drain plug where you can pull that plug and drain the fluid out of the torque converter that really makes it nice when you're doing a fluid change and you want to get as much fluid out of the transmission as possible um, short of running it through the oil cooler line and you know pumping it pumping old fluid out and fresh fluid in through the cooler lines so uh, you know a few different ways to do it but if you're just doing a pan removal filter change and you just wanted to drain all the fluids out using that uh, plug on the torque converter to drain fluid out from there it really helps because that'll get roughly 12 13 quarts out uh, including what's in the pan so it works pretty well and then you can flush the cooler out with some cooler flush or just fresh fluid and uh, works out pretty well. If you mount this on an engine stand, bear in mind that if you need to service the front end of the transmission, that's not going to work out very well. You'll actually need to get a transmission holding fixture, either a bench mounted or one that actually mounts into your engine stand apparatus. You won't be able to remove the torque converter or in the front pump, you know, get to the internal parts of the transmission. But with it mounted like this, you can service the valve body. If that's as far as you're going with it, that's no problem there. And one thing to keep in mind, always make sure you have your drain pans underneath the transmission. If you did not remove the pan to begin with and you just drained a little bit of fluid, when you rotate this transmission over, it's going to pour out of the uh, hole where the dick stick tube goes. So it's always a good idea to have a little pan set up there for catching fluid, as you can see right there. It'll, it'll drain on out and help you get a, a lot of fluid out and, and make very little mess. If you do it right, take your time, set it up right, and uh, prevent a big mess that you have to clean up later.
Okay, the rooster spring or the manual shift lever detent spring contacts the detents here for your manual shift lever indications, uh, you know, park, reverse, neutral, drive. So that's what you feel when you actually pull your gear shift lever down into various gear positions, you'll feel these detents locking in place. That's what gives you that feel. There's a pin that engages into this slot here, into this uh, valve slot. Uh, this is basically a rod that slides into this bore here. This pin engages into the first gap or first channel on this rod, on this shift rod. So just as a note, when you're taking this apart, when this goes back together, this needs to engage into this first groove or first channel. And then you would put your rooster spring back into position. So this, in a park position, that's where this is going to be. Uh, when you take the transmission apart, typically it's in the park position. That's where the digital shift indicator or switch was on the outside of the transmission, the plastic, black plastic body that we took apart. Uh, it was all in the park position. So just notate everything before you take it apart and make sure you know what position it's going to go in when it goes back together.
Okay. This is the bulkhead interconnector. This is what the black plastic lead rail connects to to receive voltage, ground, and other signals uh, from the PCM. This one here is the shift solenoid A and B combination. Two solenoids. These are the leads here, the terminals. This is the torque converter clutch control solenoid. This down here is the EPC or electronic pressure control solenoid. What we're going to do is test resistance on each of these solenoids to basically get an idea of the health of these solenoids, whether or not they are within range and uh, most likely operational. So here in just a moment we'll do some resistance checks on each of these. Okay, what we're going to do at this stage is test the torque converter clutch solenoid. The resistance readings on this solenoid should be about 10 to 16 ohms when you check it between the, ter the two terminals. At this test right here we're going to do a short to ground test. We want to make sure that either of these terminals are not shorted to ground and by doing that we'll or how to do that we're going to attach the ground terminal to the body of the uh, transmission and then the other test lead we're going to touch the terminals individually and see what we come up with all right the readings on the the readings on the scope here this still shows uh, it's offline so it's uh, it's infinite value no readings so that's what it should be it should not have any resistance values it should be an infinite reading or depending on your multimeter it might show OL for out of limits uh, or um, zero uh, or plus or minus sign just depends on the multimeter you have all right, the other terminal. Touching that one. And it also shows an infinite reading, so no resistance value. And the way to check make sure your multimeter is registering and working properly, just go ahead and touch the other lead that you had on the terminals. Go ahead and touch it to ground. And as you can see there, it changes. So you know you've got continuity between your positive and negative lead on your multimeter. So it shows about 0.3 to 0.4 ohms between those two points. So it is working. All right, moving along to shift solenoid A and B. You see here on this group of solenoids, you have three terminals. What it is is the first terminal here or the terminal closest to the two solenoids is a ground. It's like a common ground terminal that serves both of these solenoids. Then the other two terminals are specific to each solenoid. So what we'll do in this case is we're going to test resistance values between the ground terminal and then each of the other two terminals. So the first one it's testing out at 24.7 ohms and then we move the positive lead over to the second terminal and it's testing out at 25 ohms. So we have 24.7 and 25 ohms. The range is 20 to 30 ohms for these solenoids. So uh, it's within range, which should indicate good solenoids here. So we have a good, TC, good TCC solenoid. We have good shift solenoids A and B. Uh, the other test we're gonna do on this shift solenoid is make sure that there's no short to ground. And in that case, we're gonna concentrate on these two outer terminals which are specific to each one not the not the common ground terminal but the two outer ones we're going to put one lead basically connect it to transmission body ground and then we'll touch the center terminal we'll start with that okay that's infinite reading there's no value so that's good it's what it should be and then the next terminal and that shows an infinite reading no value so you don't have a short to ground through the body of the solenoids to ground and so that's just another test to verify that you have good integrity on these solenoids. 
A and B. The next solenoid we're going to test is the EPC solenoid or the electronic pressure control solenoid. That one for a normal solenoid should range between two and a half, roughly two and a half to five and a half ohms. More specifically by the book it's like 2.48 to 5.66 ohms. So two and a half to five and a half ohms is where it should fall for a good resistance reading. So we're going to go ahead and contact both terminals. There's two terminals on this solenoid and the readings on these terminals between the two measures at 4.3. So we're within range on this one at 4.3. And again, I'm just going to touch ground somewhere and between these two terminals, there's one terminal to ground, no reading, it's infinite. And then the other terminal to ground, no reading, that's infinite. So there's no grounding out of the solenoid body to cause any problem. So all these readings, looks like the solenoids are good and should not have to be replaced. So we can reuse, clean them up, reuse them, and should be okay. Make sure, always make sure you double check the seals. Make sure there's no nicks or cuts on the O-ring seals whenever you do pull these out and put them back in. Just be careful about the seals not to damage those.